So today we have two very special guests. Um, I get asked a lot about my affinity for watches and what makes me choose certain brands. And today we have with us an absolute watch expert. His name is Mark Andre, and he runs the YouTube channel Watches TV. He's really a, a watch journalist and knows more about watches than probably anybody. And as well, we have Mr. Jacob Arabo from Jacob & Co. So we're going to talk about Jacob watches, watches in general. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Hi, guys. Yes, how's things? Everything is great. How's New York City? Amazing. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And it's probably chilly in uh, Switzerland as well. Mark andre in, in Geneva. How are you? Yes. Hello from uh, Geneva. Uh, well, it's indeed winter time, but over the last few days, it's been kind of a bit better. Okay. Because it's been horrible, raining and snowing all the time over the last two, three weeks. So it feels a little bit of a spring feeling right now. Well, both of you, welcome to the channel. And uh, it, it's great to see you. And today we're going to do kind of like a round table, talk about watches, talk about uh, what is so special about them. And I'm going to throw the ball over to you, Mark Andre, so you can, uh, you can ask some questions because you are, in fact, the watch journalist. Well, OK, then I'm going to start immediately with you. And I would like to know, uh, this is kind of a typical question for me, but this, how did you start to like watches? What is your path that led to, uh, to you in this situation today? That's a great question. Well, I started watches. Um, I got my first really nice watch when I was in my teens. And what I did was um, I, I followed something that my father told me that if I ever achieve anything in life, buy myself something along the same lines and, and start collecting them. So I had no idea what to do. Uh, I really didn't know much about watches, but I thought to myself, okay, anything I achieve in life, I'm going to buy myself a watch. I never thought about how much they were going to cost or what brand they were going to be, but I was going to build a watch collection. And then uh, after I think my second or third watch, I got addicted. And I never, I've never to this day really understand what goes on inside the watches, the movements. I don't care. I buy them by the aesthetics, by the art, and uh, I've generated a, a great love for watches myself. Well, what about you, Jacob? Uh, how did you fall into watches? For me, I fall in love when I was a uh, teenager. Yeah, I was like 15 years old when my father got me a job to be a to to learn the watchmaking uh, from this uh, watchmaker in New York. So I spent my whole summer working for him. And when I took the watch apart for the first time, I really realized how difficult it is to be a watchmaker how much you have to remember where every part is going. It's so many of them. I mean, some of these watches have eight, 900 parts, right? Uh, components. So that's when I decided, I, I not decided, but that was my dream back then. That one day I will make my own watches. So I didn't actually know, Jacob, that you could build the watch movements yourself. I didn't know that you were actually able to do that. You know, like if you get... Um, a kit where you build something, you get an instruction manual. With watches, you don't have that, right? You just see all these pieces and then you kind of have to put them together. I'm not the watchmaker anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I did much simpler watches when I was a kid. But um, yes, if you don't remember, there is a whole technical drawings, a whole book that goes with the watch, where the watchmaker opens when he doesn't remember where some part that's going or what was the function is most of the time the watchmaker remembers everything if he's the one who built the watch or put the assemble the watch he knows every part of the watch that's intriguing it really is and mark andre what got you into watches well there are a few i mean there are different dimensions why i like watches one is kind of a philosophical one uh, because i think it's just such a fantastic demonstration of our human ingenuity you know to think that 500 years ago, without any machines whatsoever, some guys, some people, some, uh, they, they managed to transform something as intangible as time into a mechanical object. And I, and I find that absolutely fascinating. And from 500 years till today, I mean, we've naturally improved many of the, the, the manufacturing processes and things like that. But it's, it's still the same principle, basically, you know. And uh, I, I find that, uh, indeed, it just, it's, it's like a nice sign 
of uh, or a nice demonstration of where we come from. And that's why I think uh, mechanical watchmaking is indeed still relevant because it's a link between our past and where we're heading to, especially in our more uh, digital world that we live in today. That's a very good point that you bring up because one of the things that uh, gets talked about a lot, at least I believe it does, because we're in the digital world, why do people still want watches? Well, when I look at a watch, I know it's a timepiece, but I don't really look at it to tell the time. I look at it as a piece of art and the craftsmanship and the brilliance and the, the work that goes into making a watch. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to go to a few factories, um, different manufacturers, of course, one of which is Jacob. And it's astounding the amount of work and an effort that goes into making the watch from the from the clothing you have to wear that are dust proof and, and the, these these anti static environments it's incredible so yeah I think it's art and and it's much more than just telling the time yeah and there is a, also a nice uh, analogy with other things in our daily life is that in a watch you can have okay maybe five hundred components or a simple one with uh, much less components hundred or whatsoever and you just need one component that won't be well manufactured or so, and the watch won't work. So it just shows yeah. that it's, it's, it's a full package that needs to work. And it's like in our society, basically, you know, if we want things to work, we need to all work together. So one of the questions um, that I get asked a lot, and I'm going to actually throw this one to Jacob. Jacob, why are watches so expensive? <laughs> good question. Very good question. Uh, most of the time, they're very expensive, not because uh, the profit margin, it's because of research development. It all depends how much time you spend to develop the watch. It's the time, it sometimes could take one year, two years, three, three and a half years to the time, by the time you complete one whole movement, the first one. So that's a huge investment. And then to develop it and to manufacture every component and to make sure it works. Um, it, that's where the main cost is. And then, of course, the cost is divided by, by how many watches you're going to make of, the, of its kind. So that's how you calculate the cost. And that's how expensive it gets because of how many people and how many hours um, and days and months and years that's spent. Uh, that would be costly, and it's more that than explains more than one that, person involved. Well, that that also explains why limited edition pieces cost more money because you're making fewer of them, but the components you have to make go through the same procedure. Exactly, exactly, and and I'm sure uh, Mark Andre, he you know a lot about this uh, this this question also has to go to you. You would answer it maybe even better than me. <laughs> but, uh, please tell us, what do you know about this? Well, uh, I was just the other day with a really nice uh, independent watchmaker and we we're talking about, uh, indeed, also the, the, the prices of watches because sometimes for some people it can be, you know, almost a bit shocking, uh, the, the, those prices. But uh, that's why for, on, on my side, for instance, I mean, we, we rarely, rarely pr talk about prices because it's... Uh, this is not why we like watchmaking. It's not because it's worth something that uh, X amount of dollars or whatsoever that you should like a watch. You li like it because it, it has like, a, it, it portrays, I mean, it gives you uh, emotions basically. And I always say this is that you're not gonna like a painting because it's worth five, 10 or 12 millions. It's because it's, there's something happening. And with a watch, it would be exactly the same, I believe. And uh, today, I mean, the, 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 the kind of, the, the status uh, symbol of a watch is obviously very important and it helps to sell it. But when people understand indeed how many hours are behind each of these timepieces, then you kind of realize that it's indeed something completely different. And it's nice also to think about a watch in terms of not its cost, but how many hours have been spent developing it, manufacturing it and so forth. And so then when you relate a watch, oh, well, this watch, it takes, I don't know, 400 hours to do, 500, 800 hours, then you know, start to understand uh, what, it, uh, what it means. But um, regarding the, 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 the prices, obviously when you do limited edition, because we're talking, I mean, we love 
these kind of independent uh, watchmaking uh, type of uh, watches where the creativity is absolutely uh, fabulous. Uh, but the investment made by companies behind that is just absolutely tremendous. And sometimes it's only to do five, 10, 20 watches, that's all. So it's obviously that equates to some serious money at the end. So I, I have a question to add on to this topic, and that is, what makes a watch better than another watch? So you, you can get 10 different brands of watches and you, you could ask a thousand people on the street which watch is better. They always gravitate to, uh, towards the best known names or the ones that have had the best branding. But my question to you and to Jacob, um, in fact, I'd like to ask Jacob what his thoughts on this first. What makes one watch better than another watch? Well, some watches are better than another because they're just fashion. You know, they, they're trendy and they're more fashionable than uh, others. Other watches, they're more better because they're more mechanical uh, driven and more complicated. Uh, and that people that understand, they, they go after that more than they would go for a fashion watch. So, for example, I'm wearing one right now. This is, I don't know, it's not a fashion, but very difficult to manufacture. You know, this is a Bugatti Chiron. You know, Beautiful. This, this, this here, the whole idea was here to make it work, you know, to have this engine work inside the watch. So that to me was a challenge to do, for example, you know, a huge challenge. And it was a question, it was a question, to, will it work or not? So we still invest the money and the time and spend a lot of time to make it, you know, to try to make it work and we did. So to answer your question, it's uh, like I said, it's some watches are just trendy uh than others and but the ones i would look at is the ones that's much more uh difficult to manufacture and uh, very complicated the complications well you, you make some of the most complicated watches in the world i don't i don't know anybody that has anything close to the astronomia uh, i personally love that watch uh, when I look at them, when I wear those watches, I, I see art, I see ingenuity, I see brilliance, creativity, uh, and they're astounding. Um, with, I've actually put them on and worn them. I've been out for dinner and the watch has been upside down and I didn't even know it was upside down on my wrist because it's still a piece of art in any direction, you know? And I know you've, you've actually commented on me wearing them upside down on occasion, but it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's this beauty on your wrist that also is functional. And, um, you know, when you create something like that, it's very, very special. A lot of people say, how can you wear that? Aren't you scared to knock it or bang it? Will it break? And, and it's incredibly mm -hmm. robust. So, you know, yeah. do you get that type of comment as well? Do you get questions like that? Me? Yes. You Yes, yes, of course, because it looks fragile, but it's not, because it's really all sapphire crystal. It's very strong. And like I said, this watch is, you know, I, for example, whenever I design or build a watch, I'm only going for new technology. So that new technology has to be new concept and something that was never developed or uh, designed in the watch industry. So, and of course, the not just the design and quality of the watch, it has to be safe. So when you wear it, that you don't just break it by, by, by knocking somewhere. So it looks like it would break, but it's not. Especially Astronomia has a very thick, very safe sapphire crystal on each side, especially on top. Uh, and it's 100% secure. 100% secure. As you know, you've been wearing it for long, long enough now. I know I, I, I get such a thrill every time I put those watches on and uh, I, I get more comments wearing those. Watches. I could, I could literally wear pink, purple, green stripes all over me, a crazy hat. Nobody would ask me anything other than what's that watch on your wrist? You know, so it, it, it's spectacular and it's a, it's a thrill to wear and I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to wear them. Right. And I remember Mark Andre did the first uh, episode he, he did. I think it was my episode. Uh, Astronomy Sky, if you remember, years ago, right, Andre? Yeah, right. Yeah, he uh, he came to my Basel show, I remember, and he picked that one watch that was the most complicated, most difficult to make, which is the Astronomy Sky, and um, he made a special 
you know, he 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 did, he did a reporting on it. Basically, he did a reporting. Uh, I mean, so, those, so, those waters are really uh, are really quite unique. And, but something coming back also to what I was saying before regarding our, our past. I mean, before I mean, the, the, the main driver for the development of watchmaking was this quest uh, for proper timekeeping. I mean, it was extremely important. It, and, and this is something that maybe today we take for granted, but most of our societies, modern societies have been developed on the, the notion of mastering time in a proper and efficient uh, way. Today, this is still obviously quite important, but it's it's not as important. I mean, today, if you, if you want to have the precise time, you have enough things around you, your phone or whatever, that will give you uh, exactly this. Uh, so you want something else with a watch, you know? It's uh, And that's why I, th I see many uh, watches uh, today that they don't necessarily have you know, seconds uh, that are uh, apparent because this is, I mean, you're, you're not wearing that to have the exact precise time or whatsoever. Obviously it's nicer when a watch is uh, accurate and it's kind of annoying when it's, if, if, if there's an issue and you're losing five minutes uh, per day, but nevertheless, you want something else. And this is this notion of emotion. And when you have something like that happening in a watch, uh, that tells a story, obviously it makes it much more fun. And what you're having, Michael, with people uh, looking at, uh, at your wrist when you're wearing uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 these watches, I mean, it, it's normal because it's extremely intriguing. If it was just a plain watch, there's something more to it. And this is something that today I think has more and more importance. I couldn't agree more, um, which brings me to, let's talk about some watches. Um, I'm sure Jacob has some beautiful pieces that he'd like to show us. But before we get there, I just want to ask Jacob one thing. I get asked this all the time. Uh, we announced it was about eight months ago, I think it was, that uh, Jacob and I were doing a collaboration with a producer, Michael Watch. And oh, everyone's cool. asking, when's it coming? When's it coming? Well, uh, I believe it's coming quite soon. We, we had hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of submissions of ideas for uh, the watches, and I can't wait to see it. Jacob, talk to me. Well, you will have your watch next month. It's uh, We're waiting for some parts right now to be finished, and you'll be able to show it and talk about it uh, uh, in about three to four weeks. Yeah, it's going to be something special, very light, very easy to wear, and of course, with all the you know designs you and I talked uh, about and we we going to launch it uh, with you together in about three to four weeks from now but um yeah it's going to be very exciting this watch uh i have a some samples also to show you here today i have some uh, interesting watch while you know happens to be in my shop now it's the latest billionaire that ah. we manufactured so this is a surprise for you today. This is wow. not just a watch. It's not just a watch. And it's not going to lose any five minutes a day because it's also Turbion. And, uh, you know, Andre Mark will explain what this all Turbion is and why we make Turbion watches. So this is all full diamond baguettes, all special cut. Uh, that's, this watch took one year to build because every stone has to be cut, especially for this watch. And they all have to be perfectly the same. Uh, they have to be the same quality and also um, they have to be gauged and sized and recut to be fitted together. So that's a big How many one. carats do you have on this, uh, on this watch? All it, looks, it looks crazy. Like 173 carats, this watch. <laughs> All the finest gems. And then, of course, the question is, how much is it? This watch is 7.4 million retail. No. Seven point four million. Not because of the movement, of course, because of the movements is part of it, but the most of it is because of the diamonds that it's holding. That is just insane. What a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Jacob, My I have a question for you uh, also regarding your, your gem setting uh, technique, because you're one of the uh, rare guys that you, you gem set also the, the back case of, 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 the, of some of your watches. Yeah. Why do you do that? Why I do that? Yeah. To show the importance, the importance of the movement. 
you know, it's just, uh, to me, it's just as important because I like to see it this way. And it just makes it to me more important and to, yeah, to show the importance of the movement. And if I could do it, why not? It's luxury. It's the luxury uh, point of the watch. I have a question. My question is, how many people have bought these watches? Which ones? The billionaire. The billionaire is, um, it's very difficult to manufacture. And there's only few produced, very few. And uh, I believe this is number four. Uh, uh, if you take each one of them that was made, each one is different. Each one of them is made different. So this is uh, number four in the collection. Fabulous. What, what other watches have you got there to show us? Uh, we have uh, one of my favorite watches here. I don't know if Mark Andre saw this before, but this is, um, this is a roulette watch, casino. This is very, very special watch. You've seen it, right, Mark? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, <laughs> I find it. But something that I really like is that there's so much. You, I mean, you bring some playfulness in this. Uh, that is, people are not used to it, and it is is refreshing. Well, to me, this is all toys for boys. You know, so I create toys, and um, to me, uh, most of my watches are the meaning. And the meaning big boy you know, toys, right? These are big boy toys. So everyone has a meaning, you know, like the Chiron Bugatti has a meaning because of Bugatti car, Chiron engine and 16 cylinder, the uh, casino with a roulette table because and not just the roulette table that actually tells you exact numbers with uh, ball rolling uh, and also has the astronomy movement on top of it. So you know, for me, everything has to be with a meaning. Otherwise, I'm not just, I'm not interested to make watches just to tell what time it is. Or for example, you tell, take this uh, oil pump. And the oil pump has two derricks and it's pumping oil and into the barrel, I guess, with a turbine watch in it. You've seen this one before, right, Michael? I have indeed. It's a, a crazy watch. Thank you. Thank you very much. My other favorite watch here is uh, SF24. I don't know if Mark Andre saw this watch, SF24. Yeah, I've, I've, SF I've seen this one, yeah. Right, SF24 has 24 time zones. Very easy to use because most of the multi-time zone watches are very difficult to, to use. Uh, this is easy to see the time, easy to use, easy to change the time, and the CTs is where easy to read. But you know, regarding this watch, I think it's something that I think is interesting with this one is that coming back to this notion of emotion is that indeed when I saw this watch, I, I obviously I, I kind of flipped back myself to the to the past when I was a kid and I remember going to the airports and seeing those flat boards going like crazy. And we all like that. And we talk when I talk with uh, about this with some friends, we all have this same kind of souvenir and this uh, appreciation of this flat board. And to see this in a watch, obviously, you know, you create this little link and that's the cool part. Yes. And that watch is a champion, is it not? That's where I got the idea from is when I used to go with my parents or we used to go to the train station and you saw those you know, flip flips to change the time and, and the cities. And, and that's where I got the ideas from. And that watch is also a tourbillon, is it not? Yes, this happened to be tourbillon. Yeah, this black titanium watch is tourbillon, but this also comes without a tourbillon. And I know everybody's going to want to ask. Um, one of the questions is, how much is the, the Bugatti watch you're wearing in the gold version on your wrist? And how much is the uh, SF24? The Bugatti? That you watch is 360,000 retail. It, like I said, it has the 16-cylinder uh, uh, engine, it's, as you can see, and it has a turbine in the front, uh, 360,000. And the SF24 is 175,000, which is reasonable. Uh, and if With it's a non turbion how much is it? With a turbion, or oh, without a turbion, it's, I believe it's 69,000 without turbion. And in Tantanian. And, and that, once again, uh, tremendous amounts of R&D go into that so that that's where these prices come from. 
it's really, I remember when we developed the SF24, really took us two and a half years. It, it took a long time because there's two different functions in here, all has to work together. This is a separate module, the uh, cities and the time zones. Uh, so it has to work together with the main movement. So that was a uh, bit complicated, uh, very, very complicated to develop. But once we developed, you know, production was a little bit less, less, less complicated. But the first one was difficult to make. I also uh, have at the same time, you say, you know, two and a half years, which may sound a lot, but at the same time, it's not that long. You know, I mean, uh, and with the Bugatti, it, it, it took you, uh, I mean, it's, you, you were really fast. And because, uh, I mean, I've been following what making for a very long time. And I know that just to develop sometimes a movement can take four, five, six years and so forth. And you're yep. extremely fast. How do you achieve this? You know, I have a very good team in Switzerland uh, working and all my engineers, developers, they're very excited working on these projects that I design. And I guess when they are excited, they work harder and they put more time into it. And uh, there's passion here, there's love, um, you know, and they just come up with better answers and faster answers. Yeah, the Chiron took us only like one and a half year to, to design, uh, to, to develop. And um, we were lucky uh, to do this so quickly because I don't, it really could have taken another year, year and a half. So you never know. You never know. It depends on a watchmaker. It depends on engineer. It all depends on your team. If so you're, not... I mean, you're extremely creative, but uh, sometimes did you have like ideas that you couldn't transpose in reality? Can you talk I was that? just going to ask the same question. I was going to say, how many times have you designed something and it went to research and it just didn't work? You know something? I have to tell you, nothing happened like this. Anything I presented was made and delivered. I have much more ideas that, that it's, I, it's difficult for me to make everything that I have uh, in my mind. I think I have more ideas than I can afford but uh, I just do the best I can. I, I don't, uh, um, sometimes my, uh, uh, one of my employees said to me, Jacob, you don't think you have too many projects going? I said, no, not enough. You know, so I, I love to be busy. I like stress and uh, I like to push the envelope and, and, you know, and we have great team of people working and they love what they're doing and uh, we deliver as we can. We deliver as you know as as we can and, well your uh, products yeah. speak for themselves and uh, as a watch collector I, I have to tell you I, I i've tried every watch on that exists well that's not true i've tried a lot of watches on from every manufacturer there's some great watches out there there's some great brands out there but i still gravitate back to you um there's nothing like a jacob and co watch it tells you something when you wear it it tells you that you're creative as a person. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the wearer. When you look at the watch, and e even this one that I'm wearing today, um, it's special. It's just special. Uh, uh, this one. Oh, the can you see it? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, one of my favorite watches, it's not one of the most expensive watches in the world. Um, it's not an inexpensive watch, but it just, it's special. It feels good and I enjoy them. And I look at these watches and I say to myself, yeah, this is fun. You know, there's no need to have a watch like this, but if you're creative and you're able to get one, why not? Yes. I think uh, would you That's just the, the, the word fun is extremely important. And this is what personally why I love so much uh, the watchmaking and the watchmakers and all the people involved. Because, I mean, a watch is only the final result of many processes before. Okay. And uh, I, I, personally, I, I like to show what happened to get to that, uh, to that uh, fi final piece. But something that, I've, uh, that I absolutely love uh, with this industry is to see how many passionate people you have in it. And they do this with a, a true and sincere sense of pleasure. And you find this throughout the, in, 
entire production chain, basically. I mean, from a designer to the guy that does the prototype, the, the guys that will do uh, the finishing, the people that will assemble and things like that, they all have pleasure. And the end, the end consumer, I mean, you buy a watch not because you need it, because it is going to please you, okay? And uh, I think this is something that is even more uh, apparent with those kind of crazy timepieces that uh, you manage to, 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 to produce. There are obviously many other uh, examples and I'm privileged enough to see so many different uh, uh, type of uh, watches, but there is really a common denominator, which is this notion of pleasure and fun. I have a question for you, Mark andre Living in Geneva, probably the epicenter of watches in stores in the world, as well as manufacturer, being a watch enthusiast, do you find yourself going, walking down the streets, going in all the different watch stores every day or often? I prefer to go in the manufacturers. I prefer to go in behind the scene. I prefer to go in the workshops. I prefer to see uh, some of the guys that are actually working on, on, on things. So uh, this is, yeah, the, the, that's where you indeed, coming back to this notion of pleasure, people being, again, Passion. Some guys, you know, they will do the same exact movement. They've been doing it for the last 20 years and so forth, but they're still as passionate and motivated in doing their very best. And that's something that is extremely, I think, satisfying. And is, uh, it's just beautiful values. And that's another thing that, you know, when I buy a watch, I look at it as I'm also supporting the art. I'm supporting the watchmakers. I'm supporting the designers, everybody that goes into putting a watch together. And that's a lot of people and so much R&D, as we spoke about earlier. And it's nice to be able to support that as well and then enjoy the final product. So that's one of the reasons also that I collect watches. I enjoy them. Uh, there are many, many different sets of competencies required to build a watch. There, you have a few kind of master watchmaker that can indeed build a watch from A to Z but it's a real teamwork. And that's what I was saying before the, with the fact that, I mean, you have one component that doesn't work, then it's the right. entire thing won't work. So here's a question. It's again, I'm very naive. I have no idea how the movements in watches work, but let's say there's a watch, it has 600 components and it's not working because one of the components is bad. How do you identify which component it is that's not working. Is that a question for me or Mark? <laughs> Mark oh, let's ask, I'm going to ask you that question, Jacob. Yeah, okay. So it's actually more difficult to find out what's wrong with a watch than to build a watch. Sometimes it takes a week for a watchmaker to actually understand and re you know, to, to, understand, to realize what is wrong with a watch if it's not working. So uh, he takes it apart. He checks every function. It takes time. It takes time. It's, it's really time consuming. And the repairs, you know, even after self-service, uh, if the watch is under warranty or not already under warranty, it could take a long time. And I know some guys do complain a lot about long, uh, you know, long time to repair watches. But please don't because it takes longer to repair a watch sometimes than to build a watch. Because you really have to understand first what is wrong with the watch. It takes sometimes it takes time. It could take weeks. Uh, that's so. very interesting, and I'm sure that uh, it's actually happened to me. I've I've sent a watch in for repair, and it's been six months. I think where's my watch? And they said to me, eh, "It takes a while." And I'm thinking it's just in a heap of watches waiting to be uh, repaired. But talking about that, one last question for you: um, Watch servicing is it that important? to get a watch serviced on a regular or semi-regular basis? You're asking me that? Yes. So there is a time, you know, if, if you have already passed your warranty and the watch doesn't give you any trouble, I don't see a reason why you need to get serviced. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a simple chronograph or just automatic watch, maybe, yes. But a more complicated watches, if it's working perfectly, you don't touch it. You don't touch it until it goes wrong. Unless, Which is very rare, people. right? Often yes, kind of there are people who know how to keep their watches. You know, there's got to be in the right place. It's got, it cannot be overheated place or not, cannot be too dry. 
it has to be also well kept. If you keep your watches in the right condition, nothing should ever go wrong with it. Unless does it, you does it hurt a watch if you let's say you're a watch collector, you have lots of watches. Um, do you have to wind them on a regular basis? Um, people have said, "Oh, you need a watch winder keep them going." I don't do that. Uh, my watches live in a bank vault, and I go and get them whenever I get them. At the end of the day, they, they they always work. I haven't had any problems with them really. My answer: No, you don't have to keep winding them for them to keep working. I want to hear from uh, Mark Andre what he thinks. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it's like if you. If you're keeping them uh, winded all the time, basically it's running all the time, so it's wearing a bit more than uh, if it's just sitting still, indeed, in in, in your safe. Uh, but then, I mean, there are watches if you like if you have like a perpetual calendar and you don't want to reset and thing like that. So if you keep it uh, as long as it's an automatic watch, of course, if you uh, keep it on a winder, it will obviously prevent having false dates and things like that and you having to interfere. But uh, the, the, the problem is that if you don't use a watch for a long time, I mean, you have a bit of oil inside them uh, to, you know, to smoothen up some parts of the movement and so forth. And some of those oils then can dry up if they're not being used. So this could be uh, uh, an issue. Uh, but indeed, I mean, there, there you, you have different schools of uh, thought. I mean, you have people who say, oh, it has to run all the time. Some people say, no, it doesn't really, it's not required. Personally, I think it you you, you don't it doesn't require to be used uh, all, all the time. I would be uh, so watch winder is a nice thing because if if you're going to wear it within the next three, four, five days or whatsoever, then it makes sense. Otherwise, yeah. sincerely, I don't think it's uh, that uh, that and, necessary. Don't forget, we have guys who own five hundred to a thousand watches. <laughs> possible to wind each one of them and wear every one. So that's very very true. Well, I think this is. Yeah, I mean, how many do you have, but Michael? You should have. You, you must have what hundred watches? How many? How many you have? I have a lot. Yeah, I have quite a few. Too many okay. for to be considered sensible. No, that's not true. There's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> Another true. thing that is fascinating is that I mean, two in in two weeks, th six months, three years, and thing like that, there will be a new watch that will appeal to you. And that will create this desire, and you would like to to, to own it. Yeah. yeah, I'm very passionate about watches. So to me, you know, people collect different things. Some people collect stamps, coins, cars, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Watches, I'm very passionate about them, and I love them. So I, I guess as long as I'm able to do that, I'm going to continue to build my collection. I don't need any more watches, but uh, do I look on the internet every single day to see what's new? Yes. Oh. And there's something also, you know, important uh, regarding a mechanical watch, and it, it, it is that it's it's sustainable, basically. You know, a, a real mechanical watch, anybody, any watchmaker should be able to repair it in a hundred or two hundred years time. You know, it's it's not like a piece of, um, I mean, your iPhone is going to get obsolete at one moment, and the only thing you can do is thrash it, unfortunately. Uh, a watch, it's not like that. From day one, if it's well constructed, any watchmaker should be able to, you know, put it back, I mean, to service it if there's an issue. Okay, it might be complicated if you have to do another uh, gear trade or something or another opinion uh, that, uh, uh, to repair the watch, but it's doable, it's sustainable. Well, that's very interesting, it's very true, and you can just collect them and pass them down generation to generation, so yeah. Well, well, gentlemen, this has been a fantastic, fantastic talk. Uh, very educational. I'm sure everybody's enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know. Does either of you have anything else you want to say before we uh, we end the video? Well, I would like to say that there's something, you know, for new generation, uh, because watches had indeed for us, our generation, a functional reason. It just give us time. Uh, so today, it, uh, watchmaking is in a certain way totally anachronic, but it still remains extremely meaningful. And I think this uh, on can only go through with kind of education about what is behind watchmaking. It's not only a status symbol. No, it's much more important than that. That's very true. Very true. Jacob. Yes, sir. No, thank you very much for inviting me in. 
I enjoy every time I talk to you and welcome Mark Andre also. Thank you very much for uh, for the compliments you always give me for my uh, creations. I appreciate it for both of you to uh, recognize my brand and uh, to enjoy it. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, guys, we'll be seeing much more of Mark Andre as well as Jacob on the channel. I hope you've really enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and we are in it to win it. <laughs>